And in this next panel here, we're going to invite a few more people to help us really kind of take a look into, you know, increasing this, this noise that's in our head so that we can be a little bit more aware of it. Because, you know, we go through whether it's about, you know, weight management or about better health or about more meaningful relationships or greater intimacy in our lives or career satisfaction. There's a whole bunch of stuff that really takes over our consciousness every single day. And, Part of that noise is exacerbated by that noise in our heads. So in this next panel, we're going to be exploring what the noise sounds like for these different panelists and what are some of the ways in which our techniques or tools that we can take away to, to listen and also to manage those. Founders of Wellness Report are our partner for today and that's how we've come to enjoy all the you know humming and the meditation and all the laughter that we've been enjoying today. So uh, Wellness Report is a holistic uh, approach to living a happier, healthier and fulfilling life. And it is actually the first multimedia wellness platform, right? And it's built on palatable bite-sized concept videos, podcasts, and online courses. So over to you, uh, uh, Farina, a little bit about, you know, what is it that we do and why is this important for us? Thank you, PDS. So um, the wellness report, you know, when when I first started out with it, can you guys hear me? You can, right? Okay. So when we talk about inner compass uh, for this panel, I... I actually have no compass like two years ago. There wasn't any compass or direction within me that caused me to kind of lose my center. I really do not know what I was doing. I'm a very type A person. I was working a lot, traveling a lot, living a, a pretty successful life. But inside, it was not, it was not just clicking. And that was two years ago when I felt like Wait, something is not right. I exercise every day. I try to eat healthy. Um, I work. I earn this amount of money. But something was just not clicking. And that made me fall into depression. And I also was diagnosed with general anxiety disorder. So at that time, I really was just chronicling my getting crazy. Literally, I think anyone who goes through depression or anxiety, you feel like you're losing your mind. And, and I was just using writing as my channel and my, my healing. And, and so that became and changes into making this, this website. So the wellness report really is not about how to lose weight. We don't want to tell you, let's lose weight in 30 days. Let's do this in one week. We want to actually share with you simple ways to live better, eat better, move better. And, essentially be going back to who you really are. So that's where the wellness report comes in. And we don't want to be the next, um, you know, the, all the amazing health and wellness magazines out there. But what sets us apart is really we're multimedia. So all our content are in video and audio. Uh, but one message that really we want to bring across is really for people to pause. And that's why today we actually have Stephanie Bovis to get us to pause. And we're firm believers of slow living. I find that when I was going through my anxiety and depression, I felt like that moment of pausing give me to allow me to take a step back and really relook really at what, we, what, what is it that I want. And then I found out that, okay, firstly, my brain chemistry was a bit off. So that's the science part of, of health and wellness, right? And then there's also another group who's telling me, you know, if you're having anxiety and depression, all you need to do is go to a Reiki healer or go to this aura to check your aura. But I feel, and no disrespect to all the alternative healers, um, I feel like those are great, but those are just tools. Same with medication, those are just tools. At the end of the day, it's really back to you. I, I believe you are your best healer. And that's really the message of the wellness report. And thank you for sharing that. And, and for now, I'd like to explore a little bit into that, that story of yours that you said two years ago, you didn't have that inner compass and that, and you were in that depressive yeah. state. So how would you a, well, define what exactly is this inner compass and how did you come to find or have it? I feel like, um, you know, there's really no deadline. I feel like all of us here are always going through our days with deadline. 
we need to lose weight by this date, we need to get well. If I have a headache, I must take this Panadol and know that it's going to be okay the next day. Something like that. But for me, I find that when I was really losing it, I feel I knew that my body was 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 not normal because I get scared of going out alone. And then I was scared to even take the leaf alone, you know. And then I, I need this uh, constant having someone to be beside me so that if anything, in any case, my panic attack comes, I'm going to be safe. Which means that I'm actually put my my state in someone else's hands. That was something that I realized that I feel like, okay, if I have a panic attack, I'm, I'm, I have to make sure that my brother is here or my mom is here. But it, it took a while for me to then get my bearings again to say that I shouldn't put my own health and well-being on someone else's hand. Especially if I have a panic attack, I should now then get help, get medicated, but also get all the other tools to really take a re-look into what is it that's causing my panic attack? What is it triggering that little thing that I do not like about myself? You know, everything about spirituality today is everything about love and light. But honestly, I feel like it's it's really not all love and light. You know, when you really go in depth into, say you go for a retreat and then you take three days of silent meditation or really have a good look at yourself, sometimes those shadows comes out more than the light you know and i think that's something it's okay i mean that's the truth and it's okay for people to go into something and not feel like okay i'm going to this retreat and i'm going to be really the most happy hippie on earth um and and really sometimes you don't really look like what you're saying about yourself and that's okay like i said it's just it's really you have to find your own bearing uh, but first find your center and just then then you know find your bearing wait find your center and then find your bearing and then go with, go ahead with it and what i'm hearing is a lot of the finding your center and finding your bearing is really looking in and then asking yourself those questions yeah. listening to the noise in there yeah. right okay because there's a lot of ways we can get love and light uh, most of which is illegal in singapore <laughs> 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 That's true. <laughs> yeah. So with uh, our next lady is um, Cheryl Liu Cheng, the 24-hour woman. She's a award-winning coach, unbusy mum, and entrepreneur. And uh, she shares strategies for navigating life with simple daily changes to help women thrive in the different areas of their lives. Tell us a little bit more about your inner compass, please, Cheryl. I have uh, worked with more than 5,000 women from around the world. So I've seen the best of them, and I've seen some that are not in very good shape. Um, but I must say that there is something that is within us that's able to help us get out of it. And that's why my book, 24 Hour Woman, we work around the strategies of how you can navigate your work life, and you are constantly discovering about yourself. So you want to find your center, you may think that you have found it, but as you get to know yourself on a daily basis as a daughter, as a mom, as a wife, as a team leader, you know, um, as a friend, you will find out more and more about yourself. And the noise around the world, you know, the world around you will get quieter and quieter because these roles and expectations and who you feel you really are for the world will show up. And that's why one of the greatest things that we, we work with uh, women around the world, and this is for men too, it's just that women have a special place in my heart, as you can tell. Um, imagine if you are an electromagnet. And imagine if you are not plugged into an electric source. Are you going to be alive or are you lifeless? If you are not plugged in. Lifeless, right? But if we as women or as individuals plug into a bigger good, a bigger vision, a bigger insight of who we are in the context of the world around us, we come alive. We are plugged into a source and we must become, we become alive. And the focus of the 24-hour world is exactly that. How can we help women around the world live a happy, vibrant and fulfilled life? When I started the thesis of my book, my premise was, why is it when I work with some women, you know, they, go, they go home and they tell me, at the end of the day, I just go back and then I, 
ask myself, what is this all about? I'm disillusioned. I am having constant fatigue. And I just don't want to go to work the next day. How many of us feel that way? No hands required. <laughs> right? But I've also worked with women who says, I can't wait to get to work the next day. You know, dear, I came home today because I want to have the meal with you, but my God, I crushed it today. They had an awesome time and they can't get to meet their teams and live their lives the next day. So I want to find out what was the secret that had caused these women to have that momentum to want to be engaged with the world that they're in day after day. So that's the work that I do. Oh, by the way, I have three boys. They are 18, 13, and 9. So, yes, I do run a crazy life, but one of the things that I have been very fortunate is that I've been able to find something that I truly am very happy and blessed to be doing. And that's what I wish for you. So, you know, as, as women navigate the world, there's there's a lot in that outer world that gets in the way, right? Whether it be gender bias in a workplace or harassment, and there's a whole bunch of stuff that's going on outside. If we were to explore that inner world, what would you say is that part of the inner world that you would encourage women to engage with more? There's courage within us. It's whether we choose to tap on that courage and let that courage show up. Every time you feel you know, that something that is done towards you, you have a choice as to how you're going to respond. Every time an unkind word has been spoken against you, you have a choice as to how you're going to respond with courage. And, the, and, and courage doesn't come overnight. For some of us, particularly in the Asia context, we don't speak up as much, or we feel that we should not. Um, but if you allow to take just the baby steps to have the courage to speak up, you'll find that you will have the momentum. You start with confidence, and with the, as the confidence grow, it becomes courage. Whether it is, you know, uh, uh, what do you call that? Uh, something that is, that is preventing you from progressing your career, something that, you know, uh, a project that you have pitched for, but because you are a woman, they look at you and say, no, I don't think she can do a job. Or worse still, somebody has, that has just come back to work, just because she had a baby, they say, no, I don't think she's ready for that promotion. Well, take that courage and make that pitch yourself. If you don't ask, take that courage, make that ask, it's not going to happen. So be, be choiceful about being courageous as well, right? Uh, and, and I need to ask you this question as well because I, I speak for myself. We men sometimes can be quite clueless uh, and unconscious in the way that we engage with the women in our lives, our mothers, our, our sisters, our wives. Um, and you know, with the three boys you have, what, what would be you know, one word of advice that you would teach your three boys to support the women in our lives? Allow others to live a happy, vibrant and fulfilled life. Allow others. It's their choice, it's their journey. We are here to support them. Thank you. Our next panelist, um, well, I'm glad to have another man sitting next to me uh, uh, on, on this panel here. Uh, so Richard is an international best-selling author, international speaker and mindset coach, and he helps transform achievers who feel behind in life to become unstoppable to reach the next level. He's got a ton of publications. He works for, uh, or he writes for Men's Muscle and Health magazine, uh, Elite Daily, Lifehack, and a whole bunch of others that he contributes to. So Richard, from your perspective, you know, what does in a company look like for us and how could we use that to navigate our lives uh, great question that is I mean and I think I speak for myself mostly but I think a lot of you might relate to this is that inside it feels like the compass is spinning constantly spinning not knowing where it's actually trying to lead us and for most of my life that's what it felt like it felt like it kept spinning and spinning and I didn't know where to go so the best thing to do was not to do anything yeah and so I tried to do that I try to follow the normal path, go to university, then get a good job at one of the big accounting firms and be an accountant, right? Perfect fit. <laughs> my God, indeed. <laughs> and I told myself that every day for eight years, my God, why am I here? Why am I here? Why am I here? And that was my inner compass. But then finally, it, I, I was able to catch up to it because it, it feels like it spins so fast but then eventually it slows down. When it goes faster, it's kind of like sometimes when you're racing in a car, it, everything slows down. And I caught up to the compass and I realized this is not what I want to do. And then so I went out there and I put myself out there and the thing that I started with was I decided to be a love coach. I decided to be a relationship coach. 
but I was single. <laughs> <laughs> and I tried. I tried, and I tried, and I tried. For three years, I tried to make it work. <laughs> yeah, three years. And it just didn't work. And it wasn't until I realized that the compass might point north, but it's actually one degree to the right of north, but we're going dead set north. And if you make that little shift, that little pivot, that one degree makes a huge difference. And that one degree led me to creating the brand called The Ultimate Man. And now I'm not going to stand up here and say, I am the ultimate man. I'm nowhere near the ultimate man. That's why I'm wearing pink. Yeah. But the ultimate man and the ultimate woman is who you want it to be. Who you want it to be. It doesn't matter what it is that anyone else tells you it is. It's what you want it to be. And so that's what we created. We started getting amazing people on the show, like John D. Martini from The Secret, uh, the guy who wrote Men Are From Mars, Women From Venus, John Gray. And even from there, I realized further, my compass is another degree off. And from there, we still run the ultimate man, but now there's another business behind that. And that's what we call the freedom systems, where I've created the ultimate man in such a way that I can step away from it. All I do now is I let the business run. I do one, two, three hours a week. And then I get to build this other business on the side to help other small business owners, solopreneurs, entrepreneurs who are trapped in their business to actually be free so they can be with their family, go on vacation, and have the business still continue growing. And that's what I get to do now. And that's really finding what I call your inner genius, the real genius part, not what you're good at, not what you're great at, but the real genius. And that's when you find that, that's where you're following your inner compass. This thing about us having the freedom to do what we want, to pursue happiness and to pursue to pursue business. So, you know, from a man's world, um, I mean, the world set up for us to succeed, right? So it should be easier for men, no? Oh, big question, big question. Mm -hmm. It, it looks like the world sets, is set up for you to succeed, but it also has all these traps set up so that if you're not on the, your path, you're screwed. You know, and I call these traps, we actually set them up ourselves within our own minds, and I call these the mind traps. You know, you, and what does a mind trap look like? Imagine, like, you guys have probably, you know, drove, drove, drove and parked your car at, say, the train station. Then you get on the train, you sit down, and you're like, you know, about to put in your earphones, and then you think, have you ever had this thought where you're like, oh crap, did I lock the car? I don't remember locking the car. And then the mind trap starts and you go, oh crap, I didn't lock the car. And then the train goes, you're like, oh shit. Right? And you freak out and then it's like, oh my God, someone's going to know my car's unlocked. They're going to take my car. They're going to steal my car. And it's like, oh no, they know where I live because my GPS has my home on it. And it set it up and they're not, they know I'm out, I'm out working. Oh my God, they're going to go rob my house. That's a mind trap. And we do that with every part of our lives. We keep ourselves running around in circles and spiraling out of control and worrying about stuff that doesn't actually happen. And so that's what I say when we have mind traps and the world, yes, it's set up for us to succeed, but we set up all these mind traps in front of it to block us from achieving it. And I bet you got a couple of people here kind of thinking, actually, did I lock my car? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Thank you very Richard. Uh, our next uh, panelist, uh, Solonia. Solonia is a TEDx speaker, uh, change proneur, and co-founder of The Change which is a holistic education provider for transformative learning and self-actualization. So you design and you deliver experiential programs to develop every person's intellectual, emotional, physiological, and creative potential. Tell us a little bit about how you use The Change School to help people find and, and drive the inner compass. Yes, the Change School is a holistic learning provider. And we really, the reason we say holistic is because we see every individual as more than just what we do for work or um, how we see ourselves outside of the workplace um, because there are so many slices to um, our pie, if you will. Um, and maybe I'll share a bit about why uh, my co-founder Grace and I started the Change School. So um, about four years ago, um, for very different reasons, um, we both sort of found ourselves at a crossroads. So I had been job hopping in New York and then I moved to Singapore. Um, and I joined a big PR agency and I lasted about a year and a half, um, because I just couldn't feel like I was myself in the workplace. I couldn't adapt to the culture, um, of the company I was working at and it just didn't feel right. Um, and my co-founder, as I said, for very different reasons was kind of in the same, uh, rut 
and we both kind of asked ourselves, what do you do when you feel stuck? What do you do um, when you're not sure what the next step is? Um, and at that time, and we always say this, at that time we felt like the only two options out there were to either go get an MBA or go on a yoga retreat. I mean, those were really the two things out there. Um, and we didn't want to do either. Uh, but there were obviously things about both options that um, we were drawn to and people are drawn to. So there's a spiritual element and there's a, a search for answers in there. And there's a need for some kind of clarity. But then there's also the need to learn and discover things and explore opportunities. Um, so rather than having to choose one way or the other, uh, uh, we wanted something really holistic, something that allowed us to, to work on the mind, to work on the body, to work on the spirit. And so the change school really embodies what we were looking for for ourselves. So we needed a space for learning to happen, for, for making mistakes, for, for feeling safe and feeling like there's no judgments and there's no mistakes. It's just lessons. Um, and we needed community. Um, so having a support system, having people who are going some going through something similar um, that you can share your emotions with and share your challenges with, um, because we get a lot of comfort and confidence from that sharing. Um, and uh, and as I said, we also wanted opportunities to learn. And so in 2013, we decided to pilot a retreat um, where we brought 17 people together who were feeling stuck. And we took them took them on this journey of um, you know sort of deconstructing what the challenges and barriers they were facing um, were, and reconstructing how they looked at um, overcoming challenges or how they looked at uh, the very problem that they were facing with. Um, and then we go through moving forward, which is actually putting together like a roadmap and a plan that says, okay, this is where I want to go. And these are the little bitty steps that I'm going to take to get there. So that change doesn't become this massive, scary thing, which is how a lot of us still talk about change right now, um, which is understandable because it is scary and it is uncertain. But Personally, I, I get really excited about change um, because the flip side of it is that it's about possibility um, and it's about um, actually just reframing things that we don't know as things that could just be what we make them. Um, and so for us, I guess, you know, uh, there's a lot of, I guess, parallels in everything that everyone's spoken about today. Um, I think at the change school, we really talk about values as, as the grounder. Um, and values are simply the things that are really important to us. And those things change at different life stages and at different phases in our lives. Um, it may be family at one point. It may be self-care at another point. Um, it may be career at a certain point in your life. And I think, you know, the important thing is to be honest with yourself about what's important to you today um, and what, what may be important to you tomorrow and in this sort of pivotal moment that you're at. And if you're able to define those things and, and really be okay with them, um, then I think change becomes much easier to sort of navigate because you know exactly what it is you're trying to create for yourself, um, and you know roughly how to get there. And then what you don't know is actually pretty okay because that's what keeps it exciting. Um, I mean, if we knew what we were doing every single day and we knew exactly how everything would pan out, um, I don't know. I don't know if that would be as in interesting for all of us. So, yeah. Okay. So, if if not everything. Um, you know, kind of reframing this whole idea about change as well. Is there anything in our lives that we really should not change? That's a great question. Um, I mean, I would say just we shouldn't change what we think we need for ourselves. Um, and we shouldn't change who we believe has the best answers because we live in our own skin our entire lives. And all the thoughts we have, all the feelings we have, we may share them, but actually the only person that knows everything is you. And so I think it's important to 
to never stop tapping into that wisdom. Um, even if it's not so clear, even if it's a little bit murky, um, you know, there's a lot of value in spending time with yourself to really listen to yourself. And I think, you know, in this world of busy, busy, um, we really fail sometimes at creating just a little space, even just on a daily basis, to kind of reflect and go, okay, how was my day? And what did I do amazing? And we don't celebrate our little small wins very much. Um, we're always focused on what we didn't do or what's still on that to-do list and how I didn't use my time as productively as I could have. But I think if we, again, just, just reframe a little bit how we look at those things um, and really ask ourselves, what can we do more for ourselves um, to keep moving forward and, and never change that? process. And on that, can we please thank our four panelists for coming up and sharing their stories with us and their strategies as well. Let's give them a hand, please. Awesome. Thank you very much.